Yo, how is it going Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. How will Jermaine Fetty stack up in his second stint as a guard in Chicago? Can we expect improvements from Charles Leno in 2020? We'll be answering these questions and many more in episode 21 of Uncut. Welcome back to the show, guys. Hope everyone is doing well. The support on the channel has been incredible lately. We're getting really close to 1.3K. So if you are new to the channel and want more Bears content, do us a favor. Subscribe. Click the bell for notifications whenever we post. We post a ton of stuff, and we hope you guys are enjoying it. And also do us a favor and smash a like on this video. I am your host, Chris Malpe, and tonight I am joined by my co-hosts, Parth Shaw and Jalen McClinton. How's it going, guys? Just chilling, you know. It's late night, but we still grinding. 11 p.m. here in Chicago, but, you know, always talking bears. It's going great, you know. You know, the grind never stops, especially in this time of quarantine. So, have nothing else to do but talk bears football. Absolutely. I'm nursing a little bit of a sore throat right now, so if I start coughing, I apologize about that. But we are here to talk about the offensive line today. Uh, I've got a little spiel to read, and then we're going to answer some questions. So let's get right into it. So the Bears had the 29th ranked offensive line in 2019. It was actually power ranked 31st by Football Outsiders and NFL.com. This offseason, they lost Kyle Long to retirement. And 2019 was a down year for Bobby Massey and the 2018 Pro Bowler, Charles Leno Jr., who all Bears fans Started to really gain hope in after a promising 2019 season. Leno had five sacks allowed in 2019 and was tied for fifth in the NFL with 13 penalties last season. Massey was actually a little bit better, you know. He is always the most reliable when it comes to having a clean pocket, but he had only three penalties and two sacks allowed, so not as bad. This offseason, the Bears signed both Jason Spriggs and Jermaine Effetti to one-year deals. You know, a lot of people thought the Bears were going to address the offensive line more than they did heading into this offseason. Also drafted Lachavius Simmons and Arlington Hambright in the seventh round of the NFL draft. Jermaine Effetti, a former first-rounder who's played guard and tackle, had his best year in Seattle as a guard in uh, 2016, I believe. Played tackle the rest of his career, and we all know how that went if we watched the Week 2 game from 2018 against the Seahawks with Khalil Mack on him. Spriggs is a little bit of a different one. Another talent who who got a lot of praise heading into the NFL draft. He's a former second-round pick. Both of these guys come with starting NFL experience. Uh, Spriggs has played in 37 games and only started in 9, but has dealt with a lot of issues as far as injuries go. So we'll see if Juan Castillo can work his magic on a, on a lot of those guys. So we got a couple of questions for the boys tonight. Jalen, I'm going to start with you. Do you like the idea of the Bears moving Jermaine Fetty back to guard this year? So coming to this offseason, uh, I said if the Bears don't take an offensive line in the second round, then it's a bust for me. But, you know, now that the draft has passed and I've seen the moves that we made, uh, you know, in, in free agency and then the draft, I'm, uh, I'm confident in what we have at, at, at the O-line. Um, I definitely feel like we could obviously upgrade, but with the time, you know, how we're in quarantine right now and the pandemic, you know, we really can't do OTAs and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of confident. Um, definitely going to be competition at the right guard position. And, uh, you know, may the best man win. I'm not really confident in Fetty because he's been really a bust since he got to the NFL. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I didn't even want to take notes on Ifedi's stats because I didn't want to read it off and read them in this episode. But the good thing is that he's back at guard and he's got a good offensive line coach in Juan Castillo who's who's worked some good old lines before in Baltimore and in Buffalo. So that's promising. You know, he's back at guard. The position, once again, that he did best at. I guess we'll have to see where this one goes. I think he can be more productive at guard if you just watch some tape on him. He's not that great laterally, so putting him at tackle isn't the greatest of all things. He's more of a guy that stones while you, stonewalls you, which is ironic I say that because he didn't do a great job of it in 2019 or 2018, especially in week two of 2018. But uh, he, he's a decent blocker, you know. I really hope he can find his roots again playing at offensive line or playing at the offensive guard position, you know. I think uh, everything's setting up to, for him to at least be more productive than he was on this one-year deal in Chicago than, obviously, he was in Seattle in the last couple seasons, hoping he can return to his rookie ways. Parth, what do you think about the idea of Jermaine Fetty playing at guard? 
Um, it's questionable. I mean, he's not the best offense lineman on the market or the best offense lineman at all that you want to start. But I think Ron, Ryan Pace believes in what Juan Castillo can do, and I think Juan Castillo picked his guys out, and I think if Fetty's a guy that Juan Castillo saw potential in at guard, I mean, we knew that Fetty played pretty well at guard in 2016, I think we said, and Juan Castillo believes that if Fetty can get back to that level, then I guess we got to trust in Castillo. It's weird saying his name because I don't, don't even have know him in that well, but, yeah. you know, I got to trust Castillo. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we got to get our things together at offensive line, and it starts with guard, and I hope Fetty can definitely help us do that. Absolutely. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate because Kyle Long, you know, when he was at his prime, the Bears really sucked. And now when he yeah. is not performing well, the Bears are really good, and he goes down with an injury. He ends up leaving. Obviously, a, a piece that that locker room is definitely going to miss, but I wish all well to Kyle in his retirement, and we're hoping that Ifedi can step in and do a decent job there at the guard position. The next question I got for you guys, you know, obviously we saw the tackles take a little bit of a decline last year, especially Charles Leno Jr. That being said, you know, Leno, I think he was either undrafted or a former seventh-round pick. Uh, someone who we've seen a lot of promise from, and and whether you want to debate it or not, he's really risen. Uh, he's really risen his level of play since he came to Chicago. Back whenever he was drafted, I would have no clue, but made the Pro Bowl in 2018. He definitely has shown that he's able to perform well. Jalen, I'm going to go back to you. Do you expect improvements from the tackles this year, uh, Massey and Leno? I've never been a huge fan of Massey. Um, I'm still confused on why we gave him that four-year contract last offseason. Because in the third round, uh, this is before we traded Jordan Howard. I thought, you know, we were going to go for also t- offensive tackle. But we obviously traded Jordan, and, you know, running back became our main focus. So I definitely feel like that, you know, if Massey and Leno can come in here and, you know, have better a better season like they did in 2018, then that can, that can you know, go from – a need to back to, you know, uh, one of our strongest Starting positions. Position. So I, yeah. I definitely feel like if they can return to that 2018 way, that uh, we, should, we should be good again. I'm also right, a little bit to... iffy when it comes to uh, Massey. But that being said, he wasn't terrible in 2019. You know, three penalties, two sacks allowed. Obviously, we want that to be a little bit better, you know. The staples of this Bears offensive line are James Daniels, who's entering his third year has switched around a little bit, but has has been really good, I'd say, for the most part. And obviously, Cody Whitehair there is is the lone trooper really doing incredible work there on the offensive line. As far as the tackles go, you know, I expect Massey to be similar, but I really hope Leno can improve, and I really think Leno will improve. You know, I hate to say it, but it can't get much worse than it got for Charles Leno in 2019. And I expect that that he'll be able to improve and do better. And, And even if it's not that salvageable and it's not that great, it's still going to be better than 13 penalties and five sacks allowed. So my prediction is that Massey will be pretty similar. You know, he might even drop off a little bit. You know, he's aging. But Leno had one of the worst years I've seen as an offensive lineman uh, in 2019, and, and I expect him to improve on that. And if he doesn't improve on that, I expect him to be moved on from soon. Parth, do you expect some improvement out of the tackles next season? Hopefully. I mean, Charles Leno, I mean... I love the guy I play Madden with him, but he had one of the worst years I've seen. You know, uh, as still an kicked your ass in Madden. He did kick my ass, man. But <laughs> no, but uh, I hopefully he can get his things together because in 2018, when he was a pro bowler, this offense excelled, and it all starts with the offense line. And you know, when the if the offense is going to be great, if the offense line is great, and I think Charles Leno Jr. is one of the better players in the offense line when you look at it in 2018, and if he can get back to that form. Him, Cody, and James Daniels, it was just a solid core core to have at the O-line. And if Leno can get back, I feel like Juan Castillo is going to do a great job in doing that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, earlier today, we recorded our uh, podcast about, you know, the running back position. And that was a really interesting one to record because we talked about David Montgomery getting over 1,000 all-purpose yards and almost 900 rushing yards behind the 29th-ranked offensive line in the league, you know. We talked about the 38 sacks allowed as a unit last year. Obviously, a lot of those were on Mitchell Trubisky, but obviously the O-line does need to improve in 2020. Whoever is that quarterback, and obviously for David Montgomery's sake, because we really know how special he can be. So the next question I have for you, Jalen, you know there's a couple new pieces here on the line. Arlington Hambright, someone that, mm-hmm. that I see the promise in uh, personally. I think he could be decent. 
And obviously, Fetty back at guard. We'll see what happens with Jason Spriggs if he could stay healthy. You never know. He could be decent. You know, he has 30, 37 career games, nine career starts. Green Bay fans weren't too high on him coming to Chicago, but I feel like that's the reaction we get from them whenever any former Packer comes to Chicago, a la Jimmy Graham and Trevor Davis as well. But, Jalen, I want to ask you, as a unit, do you expect an improvement from this offensive line in 2020? Definitely, it should be an improvement because we're bringing a, a, a whole another offensive line coach that, you know, mostly in every stop he's been to, he's he's made that the offensive line into a top 10 unit. Um, hope, like I said, hopefully, you know, Leno can have another great season like we have seen him do before. Last year, he obviously had a down year, but I'm but I'm confident enough to him that he can return, especially with all hate he was getting on, you know, in the Bears media. Um, I'm not worried about James. You know, Cody is a is a Pro Bowl center, so I'm not worried about him either. I'm just worried about the the, the right guard position, who will start right there. And other than that, I can I definitely see us improving. Um, this O line was one of the main reasons why the offense was struggled. Why the offense struggled, you know, it wasn't just on the quarterback or the wide receivers in general. Because if the, if you don't have any time in the pocket, you really can't make reads Absolutely. or do anything in, in, in that in that sense. So, um, yes, I definitely expect you know, the offensive line to have a, a, a big jump. Because if the offensive line has a big jump, you know, the quarterback can play better. The, the run game could be better than it was. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how this plays out in 2020. I mentioned it earlier today that a, a good running game is a quarterback's best friend. And similar to that, a good offensive line might be a running back's best friend. Let's put mm-hmm. aside James Daniels and Cody White here because we know they're going to be consistent contributors. I already said I expect a better year out of Charles Leno Jr., We'll see if Massey holds up. I think he'll be just fine, personally. But I agree with Jalen. You know, it all comes down to that right guard position. They switched Arlington Hambright, someone I talked about earlier, over to the guard position. It's going to be between him, Jermaine Fetty, and Rashad Coward. We also have Lachavia Simmons, who I think is honestly a great backup, a great rotational piece on that line. He really showed that he can be a very productive blocker there at tackle and even work laterally down the field. During his time at Tennessee State, you know, last year in the FBS, they allowed the second last least amount of sacks in the in the uh, in college football. So that's an interesting one. Obviously, you would assume that the strength of schedule for Tennessee State isn't great, but if you look at his tape, he's also a promising piece there that can be a rotational piece if he makes the roster. I expect this line to take a little bit of a jump. I don't think you know Jalen said definitely. I'm, I'm not incredibly confident that it's going to be that much better. But I think it's going to be salvageable. I think the Bears continue to focus on the offensive line, you know, heading into the 2021 offseason, uh, maybe in next year's draft. You know, we're thinking that they might have to look at a quarterback. Offensive line is going to be another position that they'll need to address. Maybe running back, depending on what happens with Tariq Cohen in Chicago. There's going to be a lot of interesting needs next year. We could talk about that at another date. But the offensive line is going to continue to need to improve after 2020. I just hope they can patch it up and put it together to be able to improve not only for the run game, not only for the pass game, but just for themselves because it was unbearable to watch last year. So I, I do think they'll improve. I don't expect like an incredibly massive jump, but once again, I do think it will be salvageable in 2020. Parth, what do you think? As a unit, does this offensive line improve in 2020? Can't get much worse, can it? <laughs> no, really can't. I mean, 29th 20... in the league, you can't get much worse. Exactly. So, I mean, I hope we can get back to the top I mean, top 10 in 2018. I know that for a fact. But I would I, take I, top I, 20 at this point. Yeah, and especially, I mean, with new scheme, it's going to take a couple games here and there and with all this COVID-19 stuff going on. It just, it's going to be hard to get it all down, but hopefully they can get back to being top 15 because if Nick Foles is under center, that guy's going to get crushed. Let's just be honest, you know? And if Mitchell Trubisky's there, he, he's gotten a couple injuries here and there and uh, can't can't have him go down if Nick Foles is also hurt as well. So it's just you got to keep the quarterback healthy and got to keep the running backs let, let David Montgomery shine because, you know, he's got a lot of potential. And if the offense lineman doesn't improve, does, neither does Montgomery. So they got, they control the destiny of the team or the destiny of the offense, let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, you look at Juan Castillo. Also, I mean, Ryan Pace basically noted that he is – was one of the most important additions this offseason in regards to the offensive line. So I'm excited to see what he brings to the city. But that is pretty much it for episode 21 of Uncut. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, the support has been crazy recently. You guys have been loving the videos, and we appreciate it. And we're going to keep grinding for you guys. You're seeing this on Wednesday morning. Tonight we will have an interview out with Napoleon Maxwell, new Bears running back. So tune in for that. Do us a favor, smash a like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications whenever we post. 
You can also check out our website, bearitdown.com, for more content. The links to our social media fan pages are down in the description. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter, Bear Down. Parsha, Jalen McClinton, it's been a pleasure to join you guys tonight. Uh, any last words? Sleep well, boys. <laughs> Eleven nineteen p.m. right now. Um, thank, thank you guys for all the all the support you have been getting us lately. Uh, we've gained a lot of subscribers in the last thirty days. I just checked like a, a couple hours ago, which is crazy. Um, make sure you guys are staying safe. You know, washing your hands, practicing social distancing, and bear down. Absolutely, man. It's been incredible. I think somewhere between seven hundred to eight hundred subs. In the last 30 days, I'm sure the draft helped that a lot, but you know Absolutely. we're gonna we're gonna keep grinding and trying to get you guys the best content possible. That's always our motto, and the best thing about it is we have fun with it. You know we don't do this because it's a nagging pain and we're trying to make money. You know slapping ads on the videos. We do it because we love it and want to put out good content for you guys and continue to expand upon our own portfolios and continue to work towards something bigger. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful hump day. Thank you guys so much once again, and as always, Chicago. Stay safe and bear down. Peace.